hello. In this screencast I will tell you a little bit about what Python lists are and what you can do with them. I will start IPython3 here. A list is essentially a sequence of elements of any type. They compare to arrays in other programming languages or the vector in C++. Also, Python lists allow you to store any combination of different types. It's, it's generally a good idea to store just elements of a single type. Let's say a series of measurements. Let's do a few measurements, results here, and here we have to find a list. The list is delimited with a square bracket. Each element is delimited with a comma, and we close it with a square bracket again. This list has a total, which you can calculate with a sum function, and it has three elements, which you can uh, obtain by using the len function. So you can easily get the average by doing sum of l over len of l. Okay. It is also possible, as mentioned, to store different types. You can store a record, let's say um, contact equals pet and the telephone number. But this is not really a good idea most of the time because it's a bit hard to memorize whether the name was in position 0 or in position 1. For this you have named tuples or dictionaries, which we'll hear later on about. So as you've seen, you can do lists with square brackets, and we can uh, we can concatenate lists together easily with a simple use of the plus operator. So I can take the list I've defined up here and add more values by adding a list to this list, say 24.9 and 19.7 and the result will be a new list with all the elements of the first list and the elements of the second list which I added. If you just need a list to store values which you'll get later on, you already know how many values you'll have, we can do a list and say we start by initializing it with all zeros and we want to have for example 10 elements, so we can say the empty list times 10 which will be a new list with 10 zeros. L2 is 10 zeros. So now we've defined two lists in the variables L and L2. Lists support indexing just like, <coughs> just like uh, strings do. So I can access the first element of a list with L0. Remember, we have zero-based indexing because of the, the history of computer science where any list or array would be appointed to the first element and if you want to have the second element you would go to the first element plus one memory address so L1 would be the first element um, this, this list here the first element plus one that would be the memory address of the next so the one would say the second element and we can access the last element by doing minus one and we can of course also uh, Access slices just like with uh, with strings, so I can do um, l colon two. That would be everything until before index number two, so the first and second element. And uh, I can I can also change lists because lists are mutable. So I can say l at position zero equals uh, fifteen point six. Now I've changed the list in place. So the list has different values. The first value is different, the others are the same. This is not possible with strings, but lists can be changed. However, if I if I take a slice, let's say slice equals a list of all elements until two, the slice will be a copy of the values. So if I change the slice, I will not change the original list. Say slice zero equals 20 and slice is changed but the list is still what it was before. This already gives you a hint on how to copy lists. There are essentially two fast operators for doing so. One would be L2 is the original list with the slice from from before the first element to the end of the list. So L2 is now a new list so changing L2 has no effect on the original list. L2 at position 2 is 15. L 
is this and L2 has changed. So L2 is changed while L is still the same. Another way of copying lists would be to use the list constructor, or at least I call it constructor here for convenience. And this, these two are usually the fastest ways of copying lists. Now that lists are mutable, most of functions that can be applied on lists are applied in place. That means they change the element you're working with. So if I want to sort this list, for example, I can do L dot, hit the tab key to see which functions I have, and there's a sort function. And if I do L dot sort, there will not be any output because the list will be <coughs> will be sorted in place. And now L is here. So that's a bit dangerous. Keep in mind when you, for example, want to have a, a for loop for LM in list, in a sorted list, this will not work because the return value of L.sort is none, so you cannot iterate over it. You have to sort the list first and then iterate over it or use the sorted function, sorted, which returns a sorted copy of the list. This would work as well. Print LM. So now we have three sorted elements and the list would be the same as before. What else can we do with, uh, with lists? We can, for example, concatenate the elements to, to be a string. We've seen this before. We have string.join and then the elements of a list. But this may not work depending on whether you only have strings in the list or not. In this case, we don't only have strings in the list, so this doesn't do the trick. But what we can do is use a simple list comprehension here, say the list of only the string elements, string of lm for lm in the list. So we iterate over all elements in the list and make a string out of them. And then we can concatenate it, in this case, with uh, nothing in between, or we can say with a comma in between. Finally, one more thing we can do is it's frequently use, uh, very useful to have a series of consecutive numbers. We could do this in Python 2 by using the range function. In Python 3, this only gives us a, a range generator, which is better for performance, but not even not quite as easy to use for beginners. If you want to have a list with values, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can do a new list equals not just range from 0 to 5 but list of range from 0 to 5 now L4 will be a list 0 1 2 3 4 finally one thing you should know about performance and list most of the time you shouldn't have to worry about performance in Python because you usually do smaller programming tasks but uh, but when you have to insert many, many elements into a list, it's important to understand how a list works. Internally, it's consecutive memory addresses. So every value here, value 0, will be followed by the value 1 in a memory block, which is followed by the memory uh, by the value 2 in the next memory block, followed by, me <coughs> by value 3 in, again, the next memory block, and so on. And adding to the end is quite fast. However, whenever I I want to insert at the beginning of the list, I have to move everything, like all the values, one to the right in memory so I can insert one. Let's try this out. If I want to insert something in the beginning of the list, uh, in the beginning of the list means insert at position zero, and I'm inserting the element, let's say nine. This is fast, but if I want to do this often, it'll take a little bit of time for i in range 100,000. I'm inserting 100,000 times something at, to the beginning of the list, l4.insert09, 100,000 times the number 9. Let's see. This is a bit of an old computer. This may be fast in your computer, but you see, it, it takes a little bit of time, so you have to wait. And now it's done, and l4 is pretty long. We can have a look. L4 and adding new elements takes longer now because there are so many there already. If you need to do this, it's much better to reverse the list and then append 
elements over and over and over to the end. Let's say we can do l4.reverse which changes the order and now we can append a million times or 100,000 times for i in range 100,000 l4.append the 9 that means 100,000 times at the number 9 to the end of the list and this is done almost immediately and then I can reverse the list again and it's done. So this is a good uh, a good first optimization to keep in mind when you have to deal with a lot of data. I hope this small tutorial was useful to you and continue enjoying to have fun coding Python.